But when you start to feel overwhelmed, and you will, just keep in mind that one element, carbon. The Earth is continuously bombarded with energy from the sun and radiates most of that energy as heat back into space, making Earth's biosphere an open system in terms of energy. In contrast, the Earth's biosphere is primarily a closed system in terms of water, minerals, and nutrients. There are finite amounts of these substances, which are recycled through the living and geological components of the biosphere, called a biogeochemical cycle. Carbon. Carbon is the stuff of life. Carbon is at the center of it all. There is no life without carbon. Nowhere that we know of in the universe. Everything that lives, lived, will live, carbon. One of the best ways of understanding the carbon cycle is just a whole bunch of things living and dying and in the process swapping carbon. Here's the 30 second version. Plants use the carbon in atmospheric CO2 to make sugars and other carbohydrates to grow and reproduce. Lots of those plants end up being eaten by other organisms supplying them with the building blocks for other biological molecules and fuel. After being metabolized, the carbon returns to the environment in one of several different ways, ending up in the air, water, or the earth itself. From that point, it's released naturally or is extracted by humans, in either case returning carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and it starts all over again carbon that's all of life right I mean, it's just it's the constant it's the cycle it's solution this solution just over and over and over it is growth then decay then transformation all right now i'm going to give you an overview of the carbon cycle starts with our primary producers. Plants remove CO2 out of the atmosphere through photosynthesis, and the plants convert this CO2 into glucose, which is then consumed by the other animals and either passed up the uh, trophic levels, uh, respired back into the atmosphere, or metabolized and pooped. And then this is where our decomposers come in. Decomposers break down not only animal feces, but decaying animals and plants and release carbon back into the atmosphere and into the soil. And the carbon cycle on land is very similar to the carbon cycle in our water system, our oceans. CO2 moves between the atmosphere and water in a process called diffusion. As CO2 is dissolved into a water source, aquatic plants also photosynthesize the CO2 and again transforms it into glucose, which is fed upon by other marine life and is either passed up the trophic levels, respired, pooped out, or decomposed back into the water. take a look at the bigger picture. I mean, you can see how carbon moves through the ecosystem. And one thing that isn't shown in this video but is coming up here in the background is the impact of humans on the carbon cycle. And um, our existence and the fact that we burn fossil fuels and cut down the forest is contributing to uh, the increase of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. I was actually astounded when I looked at these following graphs and I noticed that concentration in the atmosphere has grown significantly just in the past 200 years. And this graph here correlates almost perfectly with this graph, which is the uh, population of the world and how it's growing. And CO2 and uh, human population is almost perfectly correlated. The Earth has not experienced carbon dioxide levels this high for the past several million years. Researchers are learning that future climate change will depend on carbon levels in the land, in the atmosphere, and in the sea, and how these levels respond to human disturbance. 
About one-third of all human-generated carbon emissions has dissolved in the ocean. More than 80% of Earth's added heat is now stored in the ocean. Carbon. Unfortunately for the carbon cycle, an element has been introduced in recent years. An element that has thrown off the cycle's delicate balance between air, land, and sea. This is the human element. Fossil fuels are extracted and burnt to power cars and produce electricity. The process of deforestation not only prevents plant life from undergoing transfer of carbon with the atmosphere, fiery blaze also releases carbon into the air in the form of carbon dioxide, all of which leads to an increase in global temperature. The CO2 are what we call greenhouse gases because they absorb heat energy, thus increasing the average temperature on Earth. Carbon. carbon dioxide in the atmosphere accelerates the greenhouse effect by trapping more heat near the surface and causing polar ice caps to melt. And the more they melt, the less sunlight they're able to reflect, making the oceans warm even faster. Sea levels rise, coastal populations are threatened with flooding, natural ecosystems are disrupted, and the weather becomes more extreme over time. The carbon cycle is the foundation of our existence, and man altering the, the cycle could be detrimental to us and our planet. Now here's Walter White to bring carbon full circle. The diamond and the woman who wears it on her finger are both formed from the same stuff. Or, say, the diamond and the man who invented it. Ha! Ah, that got your attention, right? The man who invented the diamond, H. Tracy Hall, write this name down. Dr. Hall invented the first reproducible process for making synthetic diamonds. Dr. Hall worked for General Electric, and he made them a fortune. I mean, incalculable. You want to know how GE rewarded Dr. Hall? A $10 U.S. savings bond. A savings bond printed on carbon-based paper paid to a carbon-based man for something he made out of. Carbon. Carb out carbon. Carbon. The carbon cycle. Carbon.